and welcome to the House Label Fibers podcast. My name is Wendy and uh, I am the creator behind this podcast. Uh, this is a knitting and spinning um, with the occasional crochet, although we're on episode three and there has yet to be any crochet. Um, I do have some here that I've created over the years. Um, I just haven't crocheted for quite some time. Um, I tend to go through phases of all knitting or all crochet and at the moment it's spinning as well. Um, but yeah, I haven't done any crochet for quite some time, but I do enjoy crochet. Um, Vinny is with me here as well, uh, although he's uh, snoozing. Um, so yeah, he is here. Um, so yeah, hope you're all well um, and you all had a nice festive break if you celebrate. If you don't, I hope you had a nice time, had some time off to chill out and relax. Um, we had a very chilled Christmas. Um, I was off for, sorry I've got fibre in my face, um, I was off for nine days over Christmas from my uh, full-time job uh, which was very nice so we went on lots of walks, I did quite a bit of knitting, um, I did a little bit of spinning but not very much um, and I also altered my neighbour's curtains. So yeah, and all in all, it was um, very productive. Um, I can currently see three deer walking through the field, which um, I don't think you'll be able to see them because they're quite far away. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so let's uh, jump right in. Um, you may notice that I am wearing my raise crop, which was a test knit. Um, I was going to originally knit this in Blueface Leicester, the um, West Yorkshire Spinners fleece in a DK and hold it double. Um, I also in a previous podcast mentioned that I was going to use a brushed alpaca um, so either hold it double or use it singularly with singularly? Is that a word? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to, I was going to use it with, um, hold it with brushed alpaca to try and get the gauge. Um, neither of those worked. Um, I also ended up, it's meant to be knit on a 5.5, I ended up knitting it on a 6mm needle um, just because I was really struggling to get gauge. It is a very chunky knit, knit in garter stitch. I used super bulky, um, which this is um, Erica Knight. I'm not really a purple person, don't think I own anything else that is purple, um, but this was on sale. And what other reason do you need than to uh, buy yarn when it's on sale? So yeah, this is Erica Knight for John Lewis, which is a British department store. Um, and it's um, a very thick, probably not gonna focus, but it's uh, super bulky. Um, very soft, 100% wool, um, and it's, yeah, it knit up very nice. Uh, that's what I have left from nine, I think I bought 900 gram balls, and I used, yeah, I did, I bought nine. Um, and then I've, I've weighed this, and I've got um, like 78 grams or something, so... Yeah, I did knit this pattern longer than it originally calls for. So it is more of a crop. It is still a crop, you know, it's just on the, tucking myself in. Um, it is just on the waistband of my jeans. You do some short rows at the back here um, and it's knit in the round from the yoke down and then you pick up from the sleeves and knit those in the round as well. Um, so it's a very quick, very easy knit. Um, 
Um, yeah, the only thing knitting guard to stitch in the round is that you have to do a row of pearl and a row of knit. So it's not as quick than if you were just knitting fully stockinette. Um, but to be honest, it's probably, I finished this on Christmas Eve. It's very warm um for great for scotland <laughs> and um for the crazy weather that we've been having recently um and it's probably out of all the sweaters that i have knit so far which the stone crop was my very first one by andrea maori uh, which i wore in episode one and then i knit another Andrea Maori, The Weekender, which was shown in episode two, and now Ray's Crop, I didn't say who it's by, Boho Chic Fiber Co. Um, Annie Lupton is the designer, and it is currently available on Ravelry with 20% off. So, um, yeah, it has this uh, design on the top. And I did a tubular cast on and also tubular bind off. Just think it gives that nicer finish on the edges. Um, and yeah, like I say, I think I've worn this the most out of all the sweaters that I have knit so far. Um, I seem to be on a sweater knitting quest at the moment. <laughs> Um, never ever knit a sweater in my life and then knit Andrea Maori's stone crop randomly in August and then that's it. I now have the sweater bug. So I will show you. This is my only finished object since... Well, it's not because I knitted some uh, headbands as gifts from my handspun for Christmas but I gave them away. Um, I will show you, I have a photo, if I can find it. Um, so I knit them um, in Shetland, um, not the place, the wool. So <laughs> I had some Shetland fleece that I washed, carded and spun. And then I knit these were the very first thing that I had ever made in my hand spun because um, I have spun lots but I've never actually knit them into anything so I have all these skeins of different hand spun you can see how I've got better over the time um, and I'm kind of just using them for that just so that I can see how I'm improving um, I, and, I, and I haven't actually knit them into anything so um, this is if you can see the headband that I knit um, and yeah there's another picture of it it's just on the blocking board um, this headband, I have completely forgotten who it's by. Let me just look. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, knit up really quickly. Um, it is by, it's called Headband with a Twist by Mirella. M-I-R-E-L-L-A, Marilla Moments. Um, you can find that on, on Ravelry. And yeah, it was very, very satisfying, very nice. I will probably make more. There are lots of free headbands and things that you can find on Ravelry. There are so many patterns on Ravelry. Um, just type in what it is that you're looking for and I'm sure you will find a, a pattern that will suit. Um, so let's move on to whips. I have two whips currently. Um, for Christmas, my wonderful husband bought me ooh, some Alaflos. <coughs> Excuse me, Alaflos Lopi, which is Icelandic yarn. Um, it says here, warm and cozy, ideal for outdoor wear. Um, it is 
very rustic, should we say. Um, it is soft, however, I can see some people find it very itchy. Um, I'm not really that bothered by it, I don't think. Um, but we shall see when I'm actually wearing it. I don't think I'm going to be affected by it. Um, it still smells a little uh, sheepy, which I don't mind. It also still has bits of vegetable matter in it. Um, so while you're knitting, you will find bits of straw and hay and bits of things that sheep like to roll in. Do they roll? No. Uh, that they like to um, lie in and the fiber, the uh, fleece just gets full of all sorts of things. So it's, um, it's not really plied. Um, it's a single, single spun. Um, it's quite loose. Um, it doesn't come apart, so you don't have to worry about that. It is strong. Um, excuse me, I've got a fibre in my mouth. Um, it's just, when you're knitting, sometimes um, it splits. So your needle will just go in the middle of um, the fibre. Yeah, it just kind of pulls apart. Uh, so that's the only thing when you're knitting it, but it's absolutely fine and it is going to be so warm. So my husband bought me one ball of this colour, which is like a mustardy yellow colour. Three balls of brown, I think. Um, yeah, did he get me three? I think he got me three. And six balls of this colour, which is like a really light grey, which I believe would be, is a natural grey. I mean, I've just got what I've knitted, my whip, I have it on my lap right now, and it is so warm. And I've literally had it on my lap for about two minutes. So I know 100% I'm excited to wear this in winter because it's going to keep me so warm. Um, let me just sort out the needles here so that I don't drop any stitches. This is what I've knitted so far. So I'm not that far off uh, the hem probably. Uh, maybe a few more rows and then I will start doing the rib and this the collar um, folds you fold the collar in and um, sew it so it's just a thicker collar so you knit six centimeters so the collar seems quite big at the moment but it does fold in half um, and yeah the yoke is so nice um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. The pattern is for a cardigan, um, but there are plenty of people that have made it into a jumper. It's a steaked cardigan, so you just miss out those two pearl stitches that show for the, for the steak section. Um, I also modified this to be a top down as it is a Icelandic pattern that's for a cardigan. It's from um, the waist up, but I just converted the pattern, um, which was pretty simple to do. Um, I have written in my, I'm covered in fiber now. I have written in the notes on Ravelry um, what I've done and how many stitches. Um, I am doing this for my size, which is a 36 bust. So, um, but it would be easy enough to do uh, for all of the sizes. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to actually wear this. It's gonna be so warm. Um, I'm quite pleased with the 
the inside as well. It's pretty neat. Um, yeah. So that's what the inside look like. My floats. Um, so this was my Christmas knit. I cast this on on Christmas Day and it literally took me like a day and a half to get to there. I then signed up for a test knit um, and put that, then put that down and started on the test knit. Um, so that is called Hella Short Cardigan by, now it's a nice landing name. I'm going to say Vidis John's daughter. Um, I'll put it on the screen, but you can find it on Ravelry. And like I say, it's a free pattern. Um, and if you want to look at my notes on Ravelry, I'm house label fibers. Um, you will be able to see what I have done to make it a, um, neck down rather than because I would just rather try it on and I just prefer a um, a neck down because you never know if you've knitted enough of the body um, and I don't like the thought of then having to pick up to add more rows so I just thought this way I can knit the yoke and then I can um, make sure that I have enough body and it's just then easier to pick up the sleeves and things it's i mean it's personal preference some people prefer um waist up i uh, yeah i prefer top down so um yeah like i was saying i then um put my name down for a test knit for jennifer steingas and i was lucky enough to be selected so that was on christmas eve so I didn't know that I was getting that on Christmas Day. So when I opened up uh, my gifts and I saw that I had all that Alifos uh, Lopi, I uh, just cast on straight away. So um, yeah, and then I found out that I am picked to do the test knit. So this is called Silver Linings and it is by Jennifer Steingas. Um, and this is it so far, and that's the back, so let's look at the front. I, I have used the West Yorkshire Spinners that I was originally going to use for this, held double, but luckily I didn't because I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, it's knit on 3.75s, so it is... It just has beautiful drape um, and yeah I just if anyone has knit a Jennifer Steingas sweater you will know but her pattern the, the attention to detail in the pattern is just amazing and they are so easy to follow so beautifully written that you just don't want to put them down and this yoke I mean it's just stunning. This whole pattern is just stunning. Um, so yeah, this is my Jennifer Steingas. I have just picked up for the rib. So two inches of rib. And then I will pick up for the sleeves. This has to be finished by Monday. It's now Wednesday. So, um, I think if I do the rib today, I'll easily finish that rib today and pick up for a sleeve. Um, I'm going going off the pattern. Um, I like quite loose sleeves. I don't like this has got quite a bit of, you know, it's quite loose. I don't like the sleeves being skin tight. I added six inches to this pattern. Six inches? No, six stitches for the sleeves on this pattern. I'm going to do the same with this one. Um, again, personal preference, but I have measured my gauge for the stitches here. Um, and then the amount of stitches that I have around the armhole, um, divided that by the amount of stitches that I am getting per inch. Um, 
and worked out that I need at least another inch and a bit of, of uh, fabric over my arm. So um, I'm going to add six stitches um, equally around and then just, um, yeah, just go from there. So, um, yeah, I can't say enough about this pattern. The neck as well is just cast on and then it just um, naturally rolls. So there's no rib for the, uh, for the collar. Uh, you have a few short rows at the back and then you're straight into the yoke. You do go up a needle. Again, some people won't need that. I did. Um, I tend to knit quite tight when I'm doing um, colour work, um, but I thought just to be on the safe side, I'm getting better. I'm getting a lot better to be honest than where I used to be, um, but I thought just to be on the safe side I don't want to mess this up because it is beautiful and just look at the effect that that has. So hopefully on my next podcast, I will be wearing this sweater. Um, yeah, so I'm sure it will, it must be, the pattern must be out this month, I would say. Uh, so January. Um, and yeah. So those are my only two whips. I still have the original whips from episode one. So that sock I haven't done anything with. And also that shawl, the cubetta shawl. I have done a little bit of it, but not very much. So yeah, I've been knitting the sweaters. Um, I've also bought wool for my next sweater. Um, oh, this is the lima, the drops lima that I used for the colour work, the contrasting colour in that. Um, it is 65% wool, 35% alpaca, and the main colour, the brown, is natural um, blue face Leicester. So it's very soft. Um, when I ordered this, in order to get free shipping, I thought, why not just order a whole load more of Let Lopi and I can knit another sweater. So that's what I did. Uh, that This one is Alaphos, which is um, like Aran weight. This is Let Lopi, which is like DK weight, let's say. There is... Yeah, so there's 200 meters, I oh don't know, yeah, 200 meters to 50 gram ball. Um, no, 200 meters to 100 gram ball. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's 100% um, Icelandic wool. And this is going to be a Felix pullover by Amy Christophers. Um, yeah, so I bought this just to get free shipping, but also because I really want to knit the Felix pullover. So that is going to be my next. And I have, I mean, I'll just show you the bag. I have a bag full. This is what it arrived in. And it was purchased from the wool warehouse. I bought that on Boxing Day, the 26th of December, and it arrived on the 28th, which is amazing, considering it was the holidays. So yeah, very impressed. Um, I also have the Fortune sweater, which I'm itching to cast on as well. That is knit in brushed alpaca, and I'm going to use the brushed alpaca that I purchased to when I originally was going to knit this with the brushed alpaca and the West Yorkshire spinners. So yeah, I'm gonna use the brushed alpaca held double and knit the Fortune sweater by Petite Knits. So I'm very excited. All these are in my um, favorites on um, Ravelry if you want to have a look. 
and you can see my progress on my jumpers. So what else have I been doing? Um, oh, I got I got quite a lot of fiber for Christmas as well. Um, I learned um, how to spin last year. Last year, it's twenty twenty. Um, I didn't say Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, so yeah. I got quite a lot of fiber. When I say quite a lot, I got 1,300 grams. <laughs> My husband went a bit crazy with the fiber, but I am eternally grateful um, because I will be able to make so many amazing things. I just need to quit my full-time job and have my full-time job knitting and spinning. That would be the dream. So I don't have a picture of what this looked like before I spun it. But this was some um, fiber that I spun. Um, it's uh, just worsted. Um, and I think I'm gonna knit it into a hat. It's um, lots of blues, purples, um, orange, yeah, there's all sorts of things going on in there. But yeah, I really like it. We started up spinning class again today um, after break from Christmas. And this is what we were doing today. This is what I got given. Um, it's a merino fiber. And this is what it looks like. It's fun. So, you can see, is it gonna focus? No. But yeah, so this is um, looking very pretty. It's got quite a bit of a halo. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, it's looking very nice. So I'm gonna spin up the rest of that later. Um, I'll have that to show you next time, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe it'll be knitted into something, who knows? Um, so let me show you some of my crochet because um, I do crochet. I have crocheted a lot in the past. Not just blankets, but um, clothes as well. Mostly for babies, like booties and hats and cardigans and things. Um, but I shall show you. Now I hate sewing in ends so I don't sew in while I go. I try to catch them with when I'm crocheting but you inevitably get some that don't sew. So, this is a blanket that a hexagon blanket that I have been working on for probably 13 years <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> And it is this big, so it's not that, it's not that big. Needless to say, I probably haven't done any for around five years. Um, so yeah, this is um, just, I did all the centers a yellow, um, and then I just did random, random color selections. I have an entire bag, sorry for the crinkling, but I have an entire bag of the rounds that I then just need to make into the hexagons. So I don't even know how many are in here, but there are literally hundreds. So most of the hard work has been done, but for some reason, I'm dropping them all on the floor. So they are like these bits. So all I need to do is just these bits and then I'm just attaching them as I go. So it wouldn't really take that long. I just don't have any crochet mojo at the minute, but I do really love it. Like it's a proper granny blanket. Um, I have a striped 
granny blanket um, that this one sleeps on, which is downstairs and covered in dog hair, so I'm not going to show you that one. Um, but I really do like it. It's a shame that it's just in a bag in my wardrobe. So that one is that. I knit this one. Pro knit? No. Crocheted this one um, probably around seven years ago. I think it was for someone I knew that was having a baby. And then I don't know why I didn't give it them because I finished it. So this is a blanket. Again, just did the center a different color and then made this circle into a square. Um, don't know. Haven't sewn in any ends. Still has all of the bits. And so that's probably why I probably finished it to then gift it and then didn't sew in the ends in time and then just folded it up and put it in my wardrobe. I was going to make pillowcases and then I think I got the dimensions wrong so this is a crocheted I mean, this is so nice. Um, yeah, a crocheted zigzag chevron. That's the word I was looking for. Um, again, haven't sewn in any of the ends, but this would be a nice um, like scarf, wouldn't it? I think Need to add some more, but I could totally wear that as a scarf. Um, yeah, so it is literally just a big strip of fabric, again, in my wardrobe. This one, again, was a baby blanket, going to be a baby blanket. I ran out of the cream and then I started doing it in a different cream out of... Um, oh, I've got so much fiber in my face. Um, I was knit. I was I nearly did it again. I was crocheting this out of scrap scraps that I had. Thought I had enough. Didn't. You use so much more when you're crocheting than you do when you're knitting. Um, so they are always massive stash busters. But I ran out of the blue and I ran out of the cream. So I used whatever else I had in my f stash at that time and it's just not the same. And then I put it down and didn't finish it. And I've literally got the smallest amount. So this is just a milk carton, <laughs> which is so, is so cute. Um, so I found this picture of a milk carton. I found it on online somewhere. It was just like um like a clip art kind of picture and I transferred that on to graph paper and then I just started to crochet it. Um and this is one of those blankets that you start at one corner and you just work your way up. See, so this this is the cream that I was using and then I ran out and then this was the cream that I started to use but then I was going to end up having to use it here and there was just going to be too much of a divide. I'd had this in my stash for so long that I had no idea what it was so then I just gave up and this is what I, <laughs> what I currently have. But how cute is it? <laughs> Uh, I'm really sad that I never actually got to finish it because, again, I haven't weaved in the ends, but it is very cute. So, yeah, that's my crochet. <laughs> so, I'll just fold them back up after this podcast and put them back in the wardrobe. I do have a friend at work 
who is um, his girlfriend is pregnant so um, I might give the little cream multicolored circular one to him um, yeah so that's everything <coughs> I think I'm coming down with something excuse me I'm just gonna have a drink um, I don't feel like I've got a cold or anything I don't feel nasally or I haven't got a sore throat just yesterday I just started coughing and um, I always I just feel like I need to cough all the time uh, so yeah that's the exciting stuff that's going on in my life Vinny looks very comfortable right now <laughs> he's just sleeping so I am going to call this a day and carry on with my Jennifer Stein gas testnet and hopefully finish, well I will 100% finish the body, I've got like an inch to knit and then I will pick up a sleeve and then I will be able to wear it. So thank you very much to all my subscribers. Um, I say all, uh, I have a very uh, small amount, but I am very, very uh, appreciative of you subscribing. Um, I think it's been a month since my last podcast. I am going to try and do them more frequently. It was just uh, quite a lot going on. I mean, I didn't, I was, pretty chilled but I just wanted to relax and spend time with my family and things over the holidays and that's exactly what I did it was nice just to switch off so um, yes thank you for everyone that has subscribed if you would like to subscribe please hit that subscribe button also like this video if you are inclined to like it if you do like it um, it just helps my channel um, get out there and um, makes it more visible to other people if you would like to follow me on instagram please feel free house label fibers i uh, like i say i'm on ravelry as well house label fibers i also have an etsy shop which i sell stitch markers currently um i am going to hopefully this year be moving into the fiber aspect of house label fibers so watch this space thanks again and i will see you all soon bye